Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan. I hope you're doing well today. I am a little swollen in the face from the wisdom teeth extraction yesterday. Uh, anyway, I have a things like Goosebumps video for you today. I kind of wanted to just not talk about this at all just because I had such a bad uh, frustration with it, but I talked about it in the past and I was kind of excited about reading this book and it really disappointed me tremendously. So it's kind of been a common thing happening here lately with books and movies and stuff I've been watching and reading. Anyway, this is Haunted Canada, book number one from Scholastic. It's written by Pat Hancock. Um, I love the cover. Of course, you guys have probably seen me talk about this in one of my old book haul videos, but uh, as much as I was excited to read this because of this cover, I gotta tell you, the book is really lacking. It's about 100 pages long, very slim book. Um, tall book, though, taller than a Goosebumps book. I bought this in a book lot of like six books. And I gotta tell you, man, I'm struggling real bad not to throw all the other books out. <laughs> Just give them to the goodwill and get rid of them. Uh, I probably will not do that. I, I do like to give books a chance because there are possibilities with series like this where this one's written by Pat Hancock. I think maybe she did the first one or two or he did the first one or two, whoever it is. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. But uh, I think there were different authors for each of the books individually or every other book, something like that. I think it was the case. I could be wrong about that. As you can tell, though, these are supposedly true ghost stories about certain true locations out in Canada. Canada. I tried to say Canada, and it did not work. Anyway, uh, that's what my cousin used to call it, Canada. Anyway, Canada, and I'm American, so most of these places, I've never heard of them, never seen them before, which can be a good thing, because if it's someone like myself who has an interest in hearing these different urban legends and myths and whatnot that I don't believe in to begin with, but still, hearing about those things interests me enough. Uh, when it's from another country, it's interesting hearing things that I haven't heard before. I mean, here in the U.S., we have a lot of very popular ones, a lot of different myths and urban legends and stuff. Out in the other countries, you have things like the Loch Ness Monster over in, uh, I think it's Scotland or Ireland, one of the two. You have a lot of different things like that out there that I like to hear about, different ghost stories and that kind of thing, if they're, you know, supposedly real. Uh, anyway, I was hoping this would be good. I really had some high hopes for this. The big red flag went up when I read the first 20 pages, probably two or three weeks ago, picked up the book for just out of boredom, I decided to read the first 10 or 20 pages, and I was just like, nope, <laughs> this is not going to be good. Um, I'll be honest with you, I skimmed so much of this book because of how blandly written it was. It's a great example of a cash grab book that Scholastic puts out just to make some short money off of. Uh, I will say this, there are illustrations in here done by somebody named um, Andre Christopher. Christoforsky? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say your name, Andre. Um, Andre, I want to let you know, man, if you're ever watching this video, your illustrations are great. I think they did you a giant disservice. I don't know if you did illustrations for all of the series or, or what, but the illustrations are really solid in here. I want to show you some of my favorites, like uh, this one here. There's a story in here called Murder Revealed, and uh, I think that picture is pretty cool looking, man. Pretty spooky. Pretty spooky stuff. And... Those illustrations look great. I talk all the time about the middle grade horror book of short stories I tried to put out and publish, and I tried my best. I could not find an agent to pick up the book. Um, I really want to go traditional publishing if I could ever get that done because I want an illustrator for that. This is a great example of the type of, type of illustrations I want since my book is kind of like a, a scary stories to tell in the dark type of book. Uh, you know, different short urban legend type of things, myths, tales, that kind of thing. I like that kind of story, and so I thought this would be right up my alley. And, uh, where the book is not, the illustrations are. I really like the illustrations. I think it's the biggest plus to the entire book. I love short stories. A lot of these are like two and three and four and five pages long, maybe six at maximum. So the book overall kind of flies by. It's just not great. It's really not great. Uh, the book is very blandly written. Like I said, I don't entirely blame Pat Hancock. It is a Scholastic situation. I have a feeling that uh, Scholastic probably just wanted to make money off of this. They put it out there. Um, and Scholastic does this with horror stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying it's not that great <laughs> when it comes to my actual review. I got to tell you, I got to dissuade you from this first book at the very least. I don't know about the other books, but this particular one, it ain't going to be something you're going to love, man. This is very by the numbers. Every single story feels like we're writing it the exact same way over and over again, and it just has nothing going for it. It just feels like there's no soul to this book. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oddly enough, with the pun of it being about ghosts and souls and that kind of thing. Um, there might be like one or two stories in here that I thought were actually kind of interesting. One in particular about a woman hearing scratching and she'd look up and see writing popping up on the wall, but I've seen that in Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island when I was a kid, so that kind of thing is nothing new. <laughs> now, of course, these are supposedly true. It's not Scooby-Doo, but uh, 
you know, I like urban legends, and these aren't even told in a way that fascinates me. I mean, at least Alvin Schwartz on Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, when he's retelling old classic urban legends in the world, he writes it in a very specific way that it feels like a tale, but it also feels like something could happen, you know? And it's scary, it's creepy, it gets under your skin. Not this book. Not this book. It just... It just rubs me the wrong way, man. I mean, I have a big old horror book collection. I'm trying to get rid of stuff for moving into my first house, trying to make some more room in my life, um, and especially for better books. And I gotta tell you, man, I'm struggling really hard not to just go ahead and get rid of this. This is probably gonna go in the Goodwill pile <laughs> to uh, send off to the thrift stores or something because this is uh, this is not good. I love the cover, like I said, but the rest of it's just it's not a good one, man. I hate to be like that. I don't mean to be rude to Pat Hancock if you happen to be watching this, Pat. But this is, uh, this is not good. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I hate to be rude about it, but I don't blame Pat. Like I said, I feel like this is more of a scholastic, easy cash grab type of situation, a freelance work type of thing almost. That's what it kind of comes across as to me. And again, I have, I believe all the books. I think there's like six or five or something. I think I have every single one of them. But uh, I will not be buying more if there are more. I'll just read through them and put reviews out. <laughs> you know, as I go along in the future on the channel. But for now, folks, that's pretty much it. Haunted Canada by Pat Hancock. If I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I would give it probably probably a one out of five stars, man. The illustrations are great, but that doesn't really, to me, add up. The biggest thing I think is insulting is that they didn't even let Andre do pictures for every single story. Maybe he had to at some point, but it seems to me like they just reuse them all the time. If a story involves a train, they use his illustration of a train. If it involves a murdered, scary-looking ghost. They use that image I showed you guys. A lot of the time, there's one particular image they had him draw that looks like the ghost face from Scream, the Scream franchise of movies, the Wes Craven franchise. And it's used a bunch of times. It's almost like every other story you're seeing the same illustration done, as good as they are. I mean, I'm like, really? <laughs> That's what makes me feel like this is more of a cash grab than anything. Even so, that is what it is. I could not stand this book because of how it was written. It's just a bad book overall. And it's not very common that I give a book that kind of rating. Even if it's a book that's kind of mixed, I usually give it about a, a three out of five stars a lot of the time. This one, like I said, I can't go above a one. It just, it's not good. The cover's great. The illustrations are good in there too, uh, if not great for most of them. But it's, uh, it's not engaging at all. That's the big issue here and the big, big flaws. It's not engaging. And that's the biggest sin you could ever have with your book is not making it engaging enough, especially for a younger audience like this. I think if you had a young kid, like an eight or a nine year old pick up this book, they'd be fascinated by it because they're just now probably hearing more and more about ghost stories and urban legends and myths and that kind of thing. Somebody much younger than me, which this book is designed for, would find a lot more interest in this than I did. And that's fine. That's okay. There's no problem with that. It's just... You know, I just, I feel bad about it. <laughs> it's just, this is not good. Um, anyway, that's me as a 20, almost 7-year-old <laughs> that's reviewing children's entertainment. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Haunted Canada? Do you love the book? Do you love the series? There are better books as these go as these goes along. Um, what do you think about these? I'd be curious to hear what anybody who's happened to be a fan of the Haunted Canada book series what do you think about these? I'd love to hear everything you have to say specifically down in the comment section down below. Do you plan on picking this up or have you already bought a copy of this? Maybe after I talked about it back in the day in my old book haul about these books. I'm sorry. I was really excited about this too, but it's it's going to be a while till I pick up another one. It's going to be a while, uh, especially now that I'm coming back to read Goosebumps for you guys and review and stuff for you guys again as much as I can during this move that we're going through in the next couple of weeks. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you being here. One out of five stars for Haunted Canada, book one. Like I said, book number one. Uh, what do you think? Put your comments and stuff down below for the billionth time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to spend some more time reading today. Get the whole day off. Happy Friday to you guys. Anyway, God bless you guys. Goodbye.